Um, so my name is Roy um, and I'm working uh, at, at Wix.com as an infrastructure data engineer. Really excited to be with you. Um, today we'll talk about pain points and uh, best practices regarding airflow migrations. And I'll present what do we do in Wix and hopefully uh, you will get some things to take back with you. So as I said, my name is Roy, 29 years old from uh, Tel Aviv in Israel. Uh, these conferences are, gr are a great opportunity for us to get to know each other. Uh, so this little uh, puppy, which is not puppy anymore, uh, is my dog Max. He's uh, in training to become a guided dog. Um, I really love sports um, and I can't start any talk without mentioning my soccer team, uh, which I really love. We are playing tomorrow, so uh, stay tuned and wish us luck. Um, and let's start. So. Um, I'll give a small brief about Wix and uh, what do we do with Airflow in Wix. Um, we have a huge scale of data. Um, we'll talk about the question if you love Airflow migrations, because I really do, and hopefully at the end of this talk uh, you will as well. Um, I'll present the five step steps for a successful migration, and hopefully you'll take some takeaways from this talk um, back home. So Airflow with Wix and what do we do at Wix in general? So Wix is a pla if you if you are not familiar with Wix, Wix.com is a platform for people to create websites, um, any kind of websites. Wix is a big company uh, with 5,000 people who work for Wix, more than 500 deployments a day. Um, data uh, 500 data uh, employees in the data organization. Um, it, this is a very big company. This is how it looks. Um, in by a couple of clicks, you'll get uh, this pretty website. Uh, you can do whatever you want with it. So if once you need to create a website, uh, please use our um, our platform. It's uh, it's amazing. Um, and about Airflow at Wix, so my team, the platform team, uh, the, we are in charge of Airflow deployments of Airflow. Um, it's a self-managed, of course. We have two and a half deployments: one for PIA data and one for non-PIA data. And another half deployment, a really uh, light one, just for us to test our infrastructure changes uh, and to deploy everything before we are deploying it to production. Um, we are serving 120 data engineers. They are our users. Um, we wrote in weeks um, around 50 custom operators, sensors, hooks, whatever uh, weeks needs, weeks uh, data engineers needs in order to run Airflow uh, in-house. Um, we are serving 9,000 tasks a day and one and a half thousand DAGs. Um, and I really love Airflow migrations. And the reason I love Airflow migrations is probably because you don't like them. And in general, data engineers and software developers um, struggle with migrations. Um, I love it because we can make data, data engineers in weeks life easier by doing the steps that we will describe in a second. Um, and hopefully at the end of this talk, you will be in the same status with me in uh, your relationship with Airflow migrations. So our love story begins with a painful migration from Airflow 1.10 to Airflow um, 2.2.3. It was a year and a half ago. Since then, a lot of things uh, got changed. And now we are making sure that we are already ready for the next migration. Um, no matter if it's planned for the next quarter, for the next year, or whenever it will happen. And in the meantime, we're reducing the migration time and improving the velocity, uh, which is amazing. Um, so now let's talk about the five steps for airflow migrations. So the first step is a stable environment. Yesterday in uh, Yarex talk, if you attended, um, he discussed the F official constraints file of airflow. So the first step in order to make your um, environment stable, use the constraints file of Airflow. You will just pass all the dependency nightmares and all the issues to Airflow. They will handle it and you will get back um, an environment with set of dependencies that works fine. The second thing is if you are writing your own uh, image, so you can use the official Airflow image, Docker image, extend it for your usage, Put whatever um, whatever settings that you that you want on top of it, um, and once again, Airflow will deal with all the dependencies that you don't want to deal with when you want when you just need an Airflow environment, um, and you will get a working environment, a stable one. 
Last thing um, is the infrastructure that you use in your company. Uh, we use Kubernetes with all its advantages. Um, choosing an infrastructure is a crucial part in stabilizing your environment as well. <coughs> Sorry. Um, forward compatibility, this is the second step. We always want to make sure that we are forward compatible with the latest Airflow version. And by saying forward compatible, I want to introduce you with the Wix flow world. So the Wix flow, of course, it comes from the world Airflow. Basically, this is our package with all the custom operators, sensors, hooks, and uh, all the things that we are writing in-house uh, for our data engineers. This is what most of the data engineers and Wix use in their DAGs and tasks. Um, and instead of just generating a Wix flow package with the current Airflow version, what do we do is we are generating this package three times. The first time, which is the current version, um, we install all the dependencies of Airflow, the current version that we currently use. Currently, it's 2.6.2. We just migrated Airflow. Um, and we are running all these custom operators and the hooks and tests of all the, all the custom code. We are running with the uh, current Airflow version that we use. The second part is the upgrade version. The upgrade version is the release candidate. So if we are now in 2.6.2, let's say we are planning to migrate to Airflow 2.7.0. So the upgrade version, the release candidate, will be Airflow 2.7. And we will run in all our builds, in all our processes, CI pipelines, we will run tests in this version, which means with all the dependencies that Airflow 2.7 brings. The last, but really not least, um, version, uh, package, sorry, it's the latest version package. It keeps track dynamically on the latest Airflow release. So if Airflow release a new version tomorrow, tomorrow our Wixflow latest package will change its all of set of set of dependencies. It will run the tests with the new set of dependencies. It will run everything with the new set of dependencies. And we will make sure and verify that our code is forward compatible with the latest Airflow version. Let's say Airflow release a new version, and we'll see an example in a second and our test fails, it means that we need to change something, then we will just make, make a PR, change whatever needs, and since then we will be um, forward compatible once again. This is how it looks um, in our code. Of course, we are not uh, duplicating the code. We just have a config file that generates three different packages. So our current version is 2.6.2, the upgrade version is 7.0, and the latest version uh, keeps track dynamically on the latest version. <coughs> this is just one example of an operator that we wrote in Wix. So it refreshes the Tableau workbook. Um, the reason we cannot use the uh, open source operators are sometimes related to connections and uh, privileges. So we need to create our custom operator. So this is just an example of some operator that uh, placed in Wix flow. Um, and this is how it looks from the GitHub view when we creating a PR. So in every PR in Wixflow, every code change in Wixflow, we are running several builds. Um, the main one is the Wixflow 2, which is the current version. And as you can see, it is required. So once this build fails, the, um, the PR is blocked and you cannot merge it. And we are also running the build for Wixflow latest and for Wixflow upgrade. It's not required, so we are not blocked. We can merge our PR, we can move forward but we will prefer to solve the problems and fix all the issues. And just then, when we are forward compatible, to move forward with the changes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, our, sec our third step is monitoring. Of course, after we test everything, after we build this, uh, this system, we want to make sure that we are getting the alerts for all changes. Um, and we want to get release alerts from Airflow. Uh, we don't want to be surprised and sometimes LinkedIn is not enough or every other platform that we uh, consume uh, for Airflow releases. So January 20th was a very, very, very exciting day. Uh, not because it was my birthday, but because Airflow 2.5.1 was released. It was a Friday and our Friday we are off. So we didn't care about it. But the next day in the morning, Saturday morning, we were off as well. Our week's flow latest builds started to fail. We didn't care, it was a day off. 
no, nobody cares about, uh, about such stuff. But once we got back in Sunday morning, we fixed the test and since then we were forward compatible with Airflow 2.5.0. <coughs> Sometimes we are the ones who actually alerts Airflow that something with the new release uh, went wrong. For example, this is a thread from a month ago uh, in the uh, Slack of, uh, of Airflow open source. Um, we are running, keeping track on dynamically on the latest version. In uh, the release of uh, Airflow 2.7.0, the constraints file of the latest version was not published correctly. Uh, we didn't know if it's a behavior change of Airflow or it's something else. Uh, and uh, Yarek fixed it for us. And since then, we were forward compatible with Airflow 2.7.0 once again. Um, the fourth step is test your code. We always want to make sure that we are testing our code. Um, and when I'm saying our code, I'm not talking only about uh, Wix packages, the Wix flow that uh, I described. We have a lot of other packages, but I'm not talking about only about them. Uh, we have a set of mandatory tests and we have logic unit tests. The mandatory tests are tests that are running in every PR that is uh, related to DAGs and tasks and all our data engineers code. Um, basically, we want to keep some conventions through all our data engineers code. For example, we want to make sure that before merging a PR that uh, creates a DAG or change a DAG, we want to make sure that we are running DAG bag on top of this directory in order to, to find some input errors. We want to make sure that the uh, file names have specific uh, template. We want to make sure that our code is linted. Um, and we want to make sure that our code in the platform of Wix engineering, and Wix data engineering, uh, has some templates that the code will be readable to all the data engineers, no matter which, um, which we call it company, but no matter which team you work for. Um, the, last, the last part is the logic unit tests. We want to provide data engineers with a light and really easy to use uh, test environment in order to run tests for their logic of the code. Um, we give them the ability to um, provide different requirements. We give them the, the flexibility to customize their own virtual and for running tests. Sometimes we use some ugly patches. Um, this is just an example for difference between 2.2.0, 2.2.3 and, um, and uh, newer versions. But sometimes we expand the interfaces of some packages and some, in, some um, APIs that we have. Uh, this is the API of, of getting and generating a constraints file. So we get, we take Airflow constraints file, we put there some more constraints that are related to our packages. Um, and this is the interface for it. And the last part is migration time. So after we did all this preparation, we want to migrate uh, Airflow version. Um, so during migration, we, we are, well, most of the time we give our data engineers a week or two weeks to migrate the code, make the changes that they need in their DAGs. Um, during the, uh, the migration, the build is uh, pretty long because we want to make sure that we are backward compatible for those who didn't migrate yet and we are forward compatible for those who already mig migrated. Of course, we should parallel the builds and we'll do it in the next migration, but after migration, the build time goes back down to five minutes. Um, backward compatibility or forward compatibility. So we use a nice tool called Tex to manage the uh, environments for our users tests um, builds. So this is just an example. In the last migration, we didn't want to just migrate Airflow. So we decided why not both? Why not migrating Python version as well? So we moved from Python 3.7 to Python 3.10 uh, during the same migration and it went smoothly. And uh, now we are going, getting to the part, the most important part of the talk, what can you do? Um, so these are the takeaways. First of all, use Airflow official constraint. You will never face with dependency nightmare again. And if you will, you will have an ex a, a really clear reason why. You will have the constraints file, you will have the error message and you will be uh, you will be aware of what's going on. Second thing is use mandatory tests to create conventions. All of your platform will look pretty much the same. It will be readable. It will be easier for people to keep track. 
Um, the third thing is keep track of Airflow latest releases. This way, you won't be that far away from the newer, newest Airflow version. You'll be aware of all the change log. You'll be aware of what's going on in the newer version instead of getting to know what are the differences just before migration and having to keep track and look back in many Airflow versions. Um, the fourth thing is test your code on different Airflow versions. We want to make sure that we are forward compatible, right? Do it by um, creating pipelines, CI pipelines, uh, for testing code on different Airflow versions. And the last thing, allow your data engineers to easily run logic tests and encourage them to do that in order to find failures in their code. So did you fall in love with Airflow migrations? Uh, thanks, Roy. That was that was actually very entertaining. Uh, so, a question about um, the step when you have to roll out deployments to product. I think you mentioned you use Kubernetes, so uh, you can do all the CI checks. But then, actually, rolling out the deployment, do you have? Do you also spin up a brand new cluster, like, or do you do just the rolling deployment in prod? Like, if there's issues, do you like how do you how do you go about it? Like, when you do the migration in prod itself, like when you do roll out the latest change. So most of the time we create new clusters. The code keeps, and we keep the code in the same repo. Nothing changed um, user facing. So our data engineers didn't, doesn't need to change anything, but we create new cluster and we deploy the uh, new code on the new cluster with the new Airflow version. So we will have a way to roll back uh, if something uh, went wrong. Um, we do that because of some infrastructures limitations inside Wix. Uh, so hopefully in the future we'll find a way to do it in the same cluster. Uh, now we all we also move to to use Postgres and add MySQL, which is e will be probably easier to do that uh, in the same cluster in the future. Good. Thank you very much, Roy. Once Thank again. you.